Today we're revisiting B450 and X470 and Zen 3 support, hopefully, one final time. This, well, up until stuff starts breaking, then we'll revisit it again. But this time with official Q&A from AMD with some on-record answers and additional industry insight from motherboard makers and some of our thoughts. AMD is reversing its decision, but it has acknowledged basically all of the key technical and market points that we brought up in the previous two videos. The previous video especially about 16 megabyte BIOS limitations, that is more relevant than ever right now. We'll talk about more of that in a little bit. And, uh, and that contains some of the key challenges that AMD brought up in its announcement today that it's going backwards with the support. So in this one, we'll be talking about 300 series support, X370, B350, DDR5 support, and DDR5 and 4 splits, some unofficial commentary uh, from motherboard manufacturers and official commentary from AMD directly and motherboard manufacturers directly. And we'll also be talking about whether AMD will limit or disable Zen 3 features on 400 series motherboards now that they're getting support. Our video from a few days ago, as mentioned, is more relevant than ever here. So if you have any questions at all about the technical nuance of how all of this works, definitely go check that one out. We were almost 100% certain at the time of writing that, that AMD would reverse its decision. So based on the conversations we had with motherboard makers, we wrote the content around the technical and the market reasons for AMD's decision-making process and why they did any of this at all. All that is a detailed and interesting deep dive into the inner workings of BIOS programming and the challenges AMD faced. That video also contains thoughts on the size of the enthusiast market, the sales volume of the 400 series chipset, the thoughts from motherboard manufacturers with direct quotes, and information on which motherboard manufacturers were more for or against this change to move to Zen 3 support. We won't be recapping that here, but if you want to understand the inner workings of the industry and BIOS, check it out. In this one, we're gonna do strictly a Q&A with AMD with some additional thoughts. So this is all on record answers at this point. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Conductonaut Liquid Metal. Conductonaut is what we've used in all of our liquid metal and D-lit thermal tests, capable of dropping CPU thermals significantly when replacing the stock thermal interface. Lower CPU thermals don't just allow better overclocks, but also lower noise levels because the transfer efficiency is increased. The mix of gallium and indium makes for a thermal conductivity of 73 watts per meter Kelvin, outclassing traditional pastes significantly. Learn more at the link in the description below. We'll have timestamps on the screen and in the description if you want to jump around, but we need to start by recapping AMD's announcement. In the notice that we got before launch, AMD told us that it would be posting this announcement on its official blog, but that didn't happen and the company ended up doing a Reddit exclusive announcement. One of the rare times you'll see that, which sort of goes to show you the size of the enthusiast user base and the amount of people really complaining. It, it, it seems like a ton of people from our perspective, but realistically, you're talking a, a fraction of a fraction of a percent of 8% of the market for AMD's 70% of retail. So uh, anyway, it was a Reddit-only announcement. We got a notice a bit ahead of an official announcement. And AMD made a number of comments in the announcement that confused users with some terminology uh, confusion as well. So we worked with AMD to clarify that. Key information from AMD confirms several of the storylines we were explaining previously, and we'll walk through the announcement now. So it says, we recently announced that we would not support Zen 3 on AMD 400 series motherboards due to serious constraints in SPI ROM capacities in most of the AMD 400 series motherboards. Officially, a lot of people, when AMD first said this, this is a while ago, a lot of people said BS, I call BS, that's not true, there's plenty of space in the ROM. That's actually, it was true, so what AMD said was accurate, and we've explained that, but wanted to point that out, that it was an accurate statement. Uh, AMD further said, over the past week, we closely reviewed your feedback on that news. We watched every video, nice, read every comment, and saw every tweet. We hear that many of you hoped for a longer upgrade path, and we hear your hope that AMD B450 and X470 chipsets would carry you into Zen 3 era. So here's the caveats and the notes. AMD says that it will develop and enable its motherboard partners with a special BIOS that has Zen 3 enabled for the 400 series boards. And uh, note separately that AMD is not opening up the AGISA code. They're not providing documentation. It's a binary code that's provided to the motherboard manufacturers. They could reverse engineer it and do other mods to it if they wanted, but AMD doesn't make it easy for them. So that's still closed but they are providing code to make this change. These optional BIOS updates, AMD says, will disable support for existing AMD Ryzen desktop processor models to make the necessary ROM space available. So moving forward, it's, it's a one-way ticket for this one. Separately, it says the select beta BIOSes will enable a one-way upgrade path for AMD Ryzen processors with Zen 3 coming later this year. Flashing back to an older BIOS version will not be supported. 
And for those of you who said, uh, will the AMD apologists who are defending AMD now stop? First off, uh, we weren't defending AMD. We provided both halves of it pretty clearly. We just didn't jump into full outrage mode, hammering on the keyboard. This is the worst thing literally that's happened ever this year. So that's the big division there, is providing some actual balance to it versus just we weren't going as crazy as you. And so that's somehow defense. But this, what AMD is saying here, backs up all of that. So uh, by enabling a one-way upgrade path, they resolve some of the issue we were presenting where AMD would have to worry about a massive test matrix of potentially hundreds or thousands of variants of CPU plus BIOS revision that they would have to validate. Uh, AMD further said, to reduce the potential for confusion, our intent is to offer BIOS download only to verified customers of the 400 series motherboards and who have purchased a new desktop Zen 3 processor to ensure that it's bootable. We're going to come back to this one. A lot of people asked, what does verified mean? What is that? So we're going to come back to that. Timing and availability, they said, of BIOS updates will vary. And then this is the final upgrade pathway AMD can enable for 400 series motherboards. Zen 3 is going to be the end of the line. You need a newer board if you're going beyond Zen 3. There's a question about that too. And well, what does that really mean? There's no hidden meaning here. We'll talk about that in a moment. Finally, AMD continues to recommend customers choose a 500 series motherboard for the best performance and features with the new CPUs. So, OK, all that done. We can probably get into some questions and answers. We talked with AMD. This is all official commentary now. So uh, this is, again, on record responses. What that really means is we're, we don't have to say, we spoke with sources, we spoke with motherboard manufacturers, we, spoke with, we can give you an actual company we spoke with and name it. So let's get into that section. So the most commonly question asked has been about the 300 series support. We saw those questions everywhere. Uh, KMFN in the AMD announcement thread asks the following, quote, I'm not ex expecting any BIOS updates for X370 motherboards, but I don't see a definitive statement as to whether or not there will be any attempts made on this chipset, be it very select boards or none at all. They continued and said, as the chipsets are basically identical, it would be up to the individual motherboard manufacturers if I had to guess. We read this question to AMD and asked. The answer is hard no, at least right now. So there is no support for the 300 series for X370 or B350. Right now, the official AMD answer is that there will not be support for Zen 3 on the 300 series boards, and this is not up to the motherboard manufacturers. This is from AMD directly. So this is going to be, whether you want to call it a block or just this simply the code isn't there to support it. Either way, it's not something that motherboard manufacturers will be able to do. And if a motherboard manufacturer did bother to find a workaround and somehow managed to make it work, the question of would they be allowed to do it was one we saw in that thread as well. For that, they probably wouldn't be punished from what we understand. But it's likely that if a loophole is found, it would be plugged by AMD directly pretty quickly, kind of like what we saw with PCIe Gen 4 and the 400 series of motherboards early on. So, and also, by the way, it's, it's really unlikely that motherboard manufacturers are going to go back that far and support it unless there's insane outcry. Uh, further on this question, another user named xRailgun asked the following, the new Agisa is already segmented, no Zen 1 or Zen 2 components anyway. I don't see any technical reasons why this Agisa should discriminate between the 300 versus 400 series boards. They continue to say it sounds like it can be done, but it'll be purely up to the goodwill of the vendor and or the modding scene. So our answer first, before getting to AMD, is, is that you are correct. It is possible for 350 to run Zen 3. We said that in the previous video as well, but B350, B450, a320, whatever, they can all run Zen 3. It's just whether or not AMD makes it happen via the motherboard manufacturers, whether the motherboard manufacturers are on board with making that happen. So in a pure technical sense, just like we said in the previous video, it is technically possible to do all of these things. Whether it's realistically possible is another uh, discussion, or logistically possible is another one entirely. So AMD's answer is as follows. The average 400 series motherboards has key improvements and changes that it believes offer advantages over the 300 series boards. AMD says that this includes VRM configuration, memory trace, topology, PCB layers, and so on. We'll throw in BIOS as well. And uh, noted that to ensure the best customer experience, quote, AMD must focus on the technical advantages of the 400 series motherboards. AMD is correct. The 400 series boards are way ahead of their predecessors. It's also 100% technically possible to enable support, but just like B450 and X470 as the fiasco it was originally, AMD doesn't want to do it for all of the various still technical, despite being possible, reasons and market reasons that exist, as discussed again previously. AMD has, uh, though, shown that obviously full-on freakout mode will get results. So who knows? 
Uh, as for will all boards 400 series get support? That was another question in the thread that we'll throw into this one. The answer is no. It depends on the motherboard manufacturers and what they want to support. So 400 isn't unilaterally supported for Zen 3. Next one, why didn't AMD respond sooner? Why was it dropped at all? So AMD, we asked, why didn't you respond sooner to this controversy? And AMD gave us the following information. Quote, we had to spend the time to look at the feedback and analyze the situation. We had to go to engineers and ask what would it look like if we enabled support. This wasn't plan B. It wasn't mapped out at all. The plan was to drop support. So nobody had vetted it or thought all the way through. And we had to ask if this is a one-way path, if we can support 300 series, and so on. We wanted to come back with the total answer and not a partial or non-answer. And we'll throw in as well, this often involves a lot of legal sign-offs for a company this size, so it wouldn't have been a fast response regardless. As for why the support was dropped, Andy mostly confirmed several of the technical and key market hurdles that we previously discussed. Again, go watch the second video in the series, first one as well if you want the marketing side, but. The second one in the series is what really explains all the technical detail for why AMD dropped support, and they confirmed a, a number of those considerations in that video. Officially, though, uh, for this video, AMD notes that its intention was, quote, to take a path forward for the safest upgrade experience for a large number of users. And remember that the enthusiast audience is a small one, and we give you the market share numbers in the previous episode as well. Why can't I flash backwards? Will boot kits become available? So it's sort of funny to see this question, but it was a, a common one. It's, it's funny because everybody just complained about not being able to flash forward, and now they're maybe annoyed at why they can't flash backwards as well. But anyway, the reasons are numerous, uh, as discussed, but we'll expand with Andy's official answer. Andy officially says, customers will not be able to flash back to previous BIOS revisions due to, quote, necessary restructuring that will occur inside of the ROM. And this restructuring, Andy said, includes a, uh, a revision or a change to the file system itself. We then took this answer to the motherboard makers to say, what does this mean? What, we don't really, what does this exactly mean? Motherboard manufacturers weighed in on the topic and told us that uh, the refactoring of BIOS that is necessary to support Zen 3 on B450 and X470, as stated previously, is, uh, is wide-reaching and that this has specifically the highest chance of bricking a board or causing a failure. So the type of restructuring or refactoring of BIOS specifically for Zen 3 support on 400 series boards is the type of change because they're changing how BIOS works at a lower level. Uh, we're not exactly sure the details on, uh, on how it's structured, what's changing, but it's changing nonetheless. And that's what typically causes higher RMAs. It's the most likely to cause what we understand to be from motherboard manufacturers as corruption of BIOS. So when flashing between two versions forward and then going back again, each time you're kind of rolling the dice on if you're going to corrupt the BIOS ROM or not. And if you do, it becomes an RMA issue. And that nobody wants that. Customers certainly don't want it either. Even if they get it fulfilled, it, you're still sitting without a board for a month. So that's the uh, official reasoning was due to revisions necessary in restructuring. Uh, basically, they don't want to support flashing backwards and forwards and increasing the potential for bricked boards in the process. And the end board makers want to limit the RMAs. So we asked, well, what about USB flashback? Is that a way around this? Can you still flashback with USB flashback? The answer from our AMD uh, contacts was that at this time, they're not necessarily certain. This is more of a motherboard maker question. And the answer from motherboard makers is that they might be able to implement certain workarounds, but don't bet on it if you're a user, and that it would depend on how low level the code executes on the board for the flashback versus uh, how low level the block is on BIOS from preventing uh, flashback. And then when we asked AMD if they would provide boot kits to update older boards, so if you buy a 400 series motherboard in, the, in a couple months in the future because it's cheap and it's good still and it supports Zen 3, and the question is, do I need to buy a Zen 2 CPU or older in order to flash this forward to Zen 3? Because realistically, logistically speaking, a lot of the boards that will be on the shelves when Zen 3 launches for 400 series will still have the older BIOS on them. They're probably, from what we understand in speaking with people this week, 
they're probably not going to be shipping with the Zen 3 BIOS pre-installed. So that means you're going to get a, uh, an older BIOS board. It will not support Zen 3 out of the box. You'll have to update it. Can I get a boot kit is the question. The answer from AMD is, uh, uh, quote, that they will get back to us on this. And it's too far out and too fresh of a decision to have this mapped out. We're going to assume no. That's a really expensive thing to do. They don't get all the CPUs back. We reviewed this process previously in an undercover warranty video we did years ago. AMD actually did provide an extremely good warranty service for the previous boot kit. But it's an expensive thing to do. And again, they don't all come back. We'd assume no, but it's uncertain. And uh, it is a logistical challenge of how do you deal with shipping boards going forward? Because they're not just going to kill 400 cheese right away. It's going to be a slow die down, especially for MSI. So a question of what they ship with is what becomes valid. They could do a dual BIOS thing, but that does add a lot of machine time in the factory level. And now you're increasing the cost of a product that's basically EOL anyway, or approaching it. Next question, will I get ongoing AGISA updates, including performance and security updates or patches? The answer from AMD here, as we filter it, is yes, sort of. The official AMD answer is that it's going to support the 400 series with SMU patches, with performance patches, with stability updates, and with any security patches that come along for Zen 3 and 500 series on the 400 series boards. This adds a whole lot of overhead for AMD and a whole lot of overhead for the motherboard makers. So here's the caveat where we say sort of. The sort of is that AMD will provide all this code. AMD will make it available to the motherboard manufacturers. Whether the motherboard manufacturers implement it or start skipping BIOS updates, that's on them. It's out of AMD's hands at that point. So if you're on, let's say, an older B450 Tomahawk non-Mac, like the original one, it's possible MSI might look at that at some point and say, not that many, not enough people care about this. The market volume was low, whatever the case may be. We're going to stop rolling out every patch. We'll just do every other one or whatever. That's a possibility. But AMD can't control who is implementing the patches. It can't control who skips the updates. It can't control the validation of those patches. So it comes down to the motherboard manufacturers to validate that the CPUs and all the features continue working as those patches roll out. And that if any performance updates come out, it's up to the motherboard makers to validate. And that means testing, like a massive matrix of testing now with multiple versions of BIOS for the same board, which is why they're trying to avoid this. But it's up to the motherboard makers to go through that matrix if they have the manpower and verify that whatever performance updates are in there actually work and actually do something. And we can tell you from experience on the review side, there are often several updates before the one that goes public is actually good. So we normally see them earlier and, and they suck to work with. So uh, that's where that boils down. AMD also can't control how quickly these roll out, it noted. It can control how quickly it pushes the update to the motherboard makers, but it's up to them. And it's likely that the 500 series will get preferential treatment. It's the newer product. And the 400 series owners will get updates later if they get them at all. It's likely that the most popular boards will continue getting those updates, but you'll see that sort of cadence fall out of alignment over time as they become less pop or less important to the makers. Uh, this includes M3 updates and security updates as well, not just the older ones. Verified owners of the 400 series, what does this mean? So in its statement, AMD said the following that confused a lot of people. They said, to reduce the potential for confusion, our intent is to offer BIOS download only to verified customers of the 400 series. And they say, uh, for verified customers who purchased a new desktop processor with Zen 3 inside. So the key statement there, verified customers of 400 series motherboards who have purchased a processor. What does this mean? And uh, how much of a headache is this process? We asked, and it sounds like the phrasing there was just not well chosen by AMD. They had limited time to turn this around, apparently. So uh, that's what they intended to say was the following. AMD says that verified really just means that you're probably going to be answering a prompt. So this could be in a few places. It could be in BIOS. It could be on the website before you download BIOS. Or it could be in the software that the motherboard manufacturer provides when it says, hey, there's a BIOS update available. Do you want to update? And what the, the verified means is that you will be asked, as a user, do you have a Zen 3 CPU? They might ask uh, if you have a Zen 2 CPU. We're not sure. It's kind of up to implementation. But they're going to ask, do you have a Zen 3 CPU? They're going to ask what motherboard you have. And they're going to say, by clicking on I agree or I accept or whatever it may be, you understand and acknowledge that this BIOS update might break your motherboard. You understand and acknowledge that you will not be able to boot with your Zen 2 processor that's probably in here now if you update to Zen 3. So it's just trying to establish with the Users who might get, for example, a notification via MSI ASUS software that says 
there's a BIOS update available, do you want it? And if they have a Zen 2 CPU in there and they say yes, or let's go even older, let's say they have a 1000 series CPU, whatever it may be, they say yes, update comes out, it doesn't work anymore. That's what the prompt is for. That's what verified means. It's to say that you've got one final chance here before you break everything and have to do an RMA. Now, as far as will it be supported, if you don't understand, which in case, that case, they're probably not watching this video, but if someone doesn't understand or it just straight doesn't work, it flashes and correctly corrupts it, the answer to warranty support is that that's out of AMD's hands. That's a motherboard issue. You are now dealing with motherboard manufacturer RMAs. And as people who've been to the factories and the RMA facilities, we can tell you that it's pretty rare that motherboard manufacturers will check behind you and verify a lot of your statements. So if, if you shoved your hand into an Intel socket and smashed all the pins, that's one thing. But if you say the BIOS is bricked, they're probably just going to swap the board for you. At that point, it becomes a question of, okay, now are they going to pre-flash Zen 3 BIOS on there or let you get whatever was in the warehouse? The latter is the most likely. The former is what would happen if you had a, a warranty team that is more renowned for its quality of support. They would flash it for you. So if it, they don't flash it for you, you might end up in the same situation again. So that's uh, suboptimal, obviously. And the, uh, the real problem there is more... It's not about can you get a warranty fulfilled. They'll probably warranty your RMA boards with bricked BIOS. It's a, a question of user experience, as we discussed previously, where now you're potentially waiting something like a month for a board to go to Taiwan and come back or get a new board if they don't cross chip. So that's where that concern comes from. And AMD also says that the 400 series boards are getting a beta BIOS explicitly. They're not calling it a, a release BIOS, a Charlie BIOS. <laughs> it's a beta BIOS. So. That means that the board makers are allowed to release a BIOS with disclaimers for boards that are technically on the official support list, but were not intended to support Zen 3 CPUs going forward. And that's the caveat there. So this is not going to be like backdoor updates to some enthusiast form being leaked by motherboard manufacturers. It's going to be official in that capacity. We also saw a user question of why did AMD change the marketing from through 2020 to until 2020 regarding AM4 socket support? When we asked AMD, the official answer was that AMD has no comment at this time on this question. Will this update work regardless of bio size? So we already explained this in pretty great detail, but to really briefly recap it, basically pre-Matisse CPUs do not address 32 megabyte ROMs. Their address space is 16 megabytes for anything pre-Matisse. So that's going to be anything before the current generation as of now. If you're talking Pinnacle Ridge, Summit Ridge, all that stuff. Everything before 3000 series Zen 2 CPUs, pre-Matisse. They, they have a 16 megabyte address range, but they can work with 32 megabyte ROMs if they're made in a 16 plus 16 functionally partition of BIOS. If you want the technical explainer with all the details on how this works, the difficulties involved, the compromises and trade-offs, watch part two. It went up a couple days ago. It's the one where I'm uh, in the corner holding a, a med kit in, this, <laughs> in the thumbnail. So you can check that one out. As for the question, Andy says it's just a matter of how many CPUs get and features get dropped. If you're on a 16 megabyte BIOS, it means that fewer CPUs will have simultaneous support. This is officially from AMD. Uh, it means that you may end up with a stripped down interface. And this is from us, like MSI's. MSI has a stripped down interface from 16 megabyte ROMs where it actually accidentally in some iterations got rid of fan support. It's gotten rid of all kinds of graphics and things like that. So you're potentially losing that stuff. Different compromises will be made there. More bugs will be introduced there. AMD, either way, is providing the code. It's up to the motherboard makers to implement and drop the parts. So AMD is sort of shifting a lot of this. Instead of taking it on the nose from the motherboard makers, they're pushing it off onto the motherboard makers now. And they're saying, well, it's, it's your issue now. Q&A, will you limit or disable future features of Zen 3 on 400 series? The answer to this question is no, but sort of. So AMD, in its answer to us on this question, is explicitly disabling PCIe Gen 4 on all 400 series boards. It's technically already off. It will remain off. If you were part of this discussion when all these things, when 400 series originally launched, then you'll remember that PCIe Gen 4 was briefly able to work on those. And if you have that version of BIOS on those boards that worked with it and you want Gen 4 support, then don't update because you won't keep it. But as for the uh, features getting disabled or limited, Gen 4 is the only one explicitly turned off and everything else aside from this explicit bit flip, is supposed to be not explicitly blocked. But that's different from enabled. 
So, and it's different from limited. So what AMD here is saying is that it will not limit what we assume to be 4,000 series CPUs, whatever they're called, and their features. But if those CPUs have features that are not supported on the 400 series boards for one reason or another, then they won't be there. Not because they're blocked, but because they, for one reason or another, don't work. They didn't validate, they don't have some kind of physical hardware in place, whatever. Uh, so if the 450X470 boards are incongruent with the new CPU features on Zen 3, they won't be present. And for example, PBO is present on 400 series, 500 series boards. You won't find some features like that that are newer with Zen 2 on the oldest uh, 300 series boards, even if it's supported with a beta BIOS, which is kind of how that rolled out too. So we may see something similar with Zen 3 where new features are BIOS driven at launch, but don't come on the older boards. And that doesn't mean they're blocked, but it does mean they won't work. So it's just we don't know what those are at this point. And then final question we have, at least written down for now, will the 500 series support DDR4 or DDR5 splits? So this came up because someone said that the phrasing AMD used about how this will be the last platform or the last uh, architecture that is supported on this platform, Zen 3, end of the road for B450X470 after this, no more updates. The question was, in the writing that AMD had following that of uh, you'll need a new motherboard going forward, does that mean D4, D5 splits? So officially, AM4 is in use until DDR5 is available. Uh, one of AMD's former representatives who worked there back in 2017 and 2016, actually, when we were talking AM4, told us that that was the record answer, on record answer four years ago. DDR5 is what's going to dictate our next uh, socket move. So. As for Andy's official answer today, we asked in relation to your statement just released, is there any implication behind the wording used about D5 support? And they said there's no implication behind it. It is firmly that this is the end of the road for the 400 series boards. Don't complain about it not supporting anything else in the future. If there's a Zen 3 Plus, if there's a half step, it might not be supported. And they're basically saying at this point, you're aware of that. and. Uh, don't come back to us complaining. So that's kind of where AMD is positioned. I and mean, some of that is my extrapolation of their answer, but you get the idea. So there will be no support beyond Zen 3 there. Zen 3 might not be the end of the line for X570 or B550. That's not confirmed yet. There could be something else. There could be a Zen 3 Plus. Maybe there's a delay because of human malware that causes AMD to have to stretch the timeline on DDR5 support, which is currently on roadmap for 2022. If that's the case, that might work on X570, B550, not the 400 series boards, but there's no explicit statement on that. As far as 400 is concerned, Zen 3 is it, and X570, no commitment as of right now. So that'll wrap it up then. This storyline is mostly closed. The one outstanding thing that we might have to come back and do a revisit on is once these updates start rolling out, how well are they supported by the motherboard manufacturers? And it'll be tough to figure out who deserves the criticism at that point. Is it the community for asking for something and then it's buggy, even though it wasn't provided, is it the motherboard manufacturers for providing something now that is optional, but they're not gonna support it fully, maybe it's their fault for doing that, or is it AMD for backpedaling? And we'll just have to look at it board by board basis, but hopefully everything works properly. It sounds like by strictly disallowing going backwards, by strictly stating that not all the CPUs are gonna be supported, it sounds like AMD might be sidestepping hopefully a lot of the headaches that would have emerged from usability issues and from the wider market outside of enthusiasts. But we're going to keep an eye on it, obviously, and we'll do testing once this starts, stuff starts rolling out. As for when that's going to happen, AMD says that it's up to the motherboard manufacturers. AMD has not presently provided the code to them, but it is working on it. And then it'll be up to do the boards want to update for the Zen 3 launch, before it, after it, whatever. And further, this is going to be a situation where probably one manufacturer does it and then they all start doing it because it's a marketing point and they look weak if they don't. So you're probably going to see MSI really aggressive on this. They're the ones who wanted this change the most. They were pushing AMD and constantly pushing AMD for the last few days to try and get this out there for reasons we explained previously. Asus was the least on board originally, but if everyone else is doing it, they'll probably do it too. So. Uh, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. Go check out the previous video at least. And if you want to see the marketing side and why AMD really screwed this up and got themselves into the trouble they did, watch part one. We talk about that for the first half there. And uh, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to support us directly. We'll see you all next time.